When writing the script for an episode of Cutemark Laboratories, it's virtually impossible for me to explain every little bit of information to cover every little possible thing someone could misunderstand and get confused by. Believe me, I've tried. It's not until after the fact that I realized that one place I forgot to cover all my bases, thanks to the myriad of comments pointing it out to me in varying degrees of politeness. I do my best to reply, but giving individual responses to the same question a couple hundred times can make one rapidly lose their grasp on sanity. So from now on, every December or January, I will release an episode follow-up for the year that just concluded, going over every episode that I think needs this treatment and addressing the most common complaints, comments, and questions. Hopefully this works out and solves the problem, because if not, I'm going to set things on fire. Roll the intro. The first episode of this show from 2015, or at least the first episode that I consider to be a part of Season 2, is Rainbow Dash, Mentally Challenged? This episode was received rather well as far as I can tell, though there were some issues people had. Many people said that they believed Rainbow could be better diagnosed as having ADHD, not autism. This was something that occurred to me while making the video, but I settled on autism for various reasons and didn't think to actually bring up the possibility of ADHD. However, now I see I should have gone over this, and I shall start by saying, ADHD is very, very commonly seen as the go-to diagnosis by parents, teachers, and even fellow peers if someone is acting differently from them. The thing about ADHD versus autism is that they are frequently confused with one another because they share many of the same major symptoms. When you see you're not paying attention in Twilight's class, obviously that can mean ADHD, but then you don't take into account the way she does learn putting the information in a scenario she's familiar with. While obviously this can work for people with ADHD or any other sort of disorder or just no disorder at all, it's much more frequently associated with the learning process of kids with autism. And that's just one example. In short, while it's understandable to believe Rambo has ADHD, the smaller bits of info point more towards autism, but really either one could work. After that, there weren't really too many major problems with the episodes, aside from some people not getting the point of an April Fool's joke, until the one about Pinkie Pie being adopted. About 75% of the complaints were on my pronunciation of Allele, which I blame on having never heard the word spoken out loud before. And even now, I have to ask, who the heck came up with how to say that? Allele? That sounds like a rejected Pokemon name to me. Anyway, the main complaint actually directed at my theory and research was that Pinky's pink color could come from her ancestors, and that I apparently researched genes and traits incorrectly. In this situation, I think we're both right. I didn't research incorrectly, I spent more than long enough preventing that. I just tried to simplify my explanations and attribute them to a cartoon. But there were definitely some other ways Pinky could have gotten her pink coloring, not to mention trying to attribute human science to cartoon ponies is far from easy. So I will fully admit that, in this part of the episode, there is a fair chance I was wrong. But that isn't the end of the complaints. Months after I released that video, one episode came out known as Hearthbreakers, and... Well, it took about 10 minutes before the comments were flooded with people saying I was wrong due to one line of Pinkie Pie saying that Marble Pie was only a couple minutes younger than her. On one hand, yes, this could disprove my theory. However, there are alternate explanations as well. For example, Pinkie might not be aware that she was adopted due to it happening at such a young age. Or she knows Marble isn't her sister, but just thinks of her as one. Or she doesn't think that at all and just finds it interesting or amusing that their births were only a couple minutes apart. There are quite a few ways around that line of dialogue, and while I may seem like I'm grasping at straws, that's how theories work. You don't drop them until there's absolutely no way around it. If you want to accept my explanation, that's fine, and if you want to go against it, so be it. It can really go either way. I'm just a guy who takes the information and turns it into a theory. The next few episodes went over rather well, at least in my opinion, and there were no recurring complaints or repeated criticisms for a good while. A couple people were confused by my use of time travel as an explanation for the crystal mirror in my Equestria's Earth episode, to which I will point out, that is known as a causal loop, or a predestination paradox. If you go on TV tropes, it's also known as a stable time loop. Because Pony Twilight went through the mirror, back to human times, and ended up bringing equestrian magic there, it eventually caused the population to turn into magical ponies, which, after a thousand years or so, led to Twilight going through the mirror, back to human times, bringing equestrian magic there, and so on and so forth. Just don't think about it too much. Time travel is a confusing and controversial topic for a reason. So, moving on from that, 
It wasn't until my most recent QD Mark Laboratories video about Vinyl Scratch being mute when a common complaint finally came up. This one took the form of people citing Vinyl as talking, cheering, and singing in the Equestria Girls movies. Specifically, she sung along to a song she was DJing in the first movie and cheered with the crowd in Friendship Games. Now, for starters, I already stated that the Equestria Girls characters can't be considered canon to their pony ones because they have differences. For example, Equestria Girls Spike is a normal dog who can't talk, while Pony World Spike is a baby dragon who can talk and is otherwise just as sentient as the ponies. And when he goes through the mirror, the only thing that changes is he goes from dragon to dog. So even if Vinyl did talk in Equestria Girls, it wouldn't change anything about whether or not her pony self can. But let's take Equestria Girls at face value for a moment. Every time Vinyl supposedly talks, it's at a point where her voice would be drowned out if she actually said anything, and it could be reasonably theorized that she's just mouthing or lip syncing. Especially since, during Rainbow Rocks, she never talks even at points where it would make a lot of sense for her to. I don't care how loud the music in her headphones is, if she could talk, she would. Some people have been saying that she might just not want to talk, which, while that is a very big stretch considering the situations she ends up in, I suppose it's understandable. But that isn't exactly a common thing. And yes, I am aware that there are some mental disorders, including types of autism, that make the person afflicted with it not talk even though they're perfectly capable of it. But those almost always come with a lot of other effects that Vinyl is not seen as having. And I've seen a lot of theories that go along the lines of maybe she's just shy, which you could probably see the problem with that one. Or maybe she thinks her actions speak louder than her words, even though she's not actually doing any actions during the time when she could be talking. Honestly, I just can't think of any explanation for why she wouldn't talk unless she just can't. And plus, to wrap it up once again, Equestria Girls characters cannot be considered accurate portrayals of their pony selves. Thus, only the pony form of Vinyl, who was shown a couple times to be in situations where speaking would be much easier than what she does, really matters for this analysis. And that, as far as I could tell, wraps up this follow-up. What did you think? Should I continue doing this at the end of every year? Are there any changes you'd recommend? Leave your comments below, and if I keep doing this, I'll see about improving the format for you guys. I'm the Science Pony, and until next time, Merry Hearthswarming, and a Happy New Year!